Hi, this is Marty's Intelligent Brother Mark here, and welcome to another edition of Worldwide Magazine. Tonight, we're going to replay some excerpts of a public hearing, which was at Larry Rice's New Life Evangelistic Center, the home of Channel 24, and at which we were very proud to participate. We had a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour public hearing back on the 25th of June, and tonight we're going to replay some excerpts of this public hearing, which concerned itself with the placement of Larry Rice's KNLC Channel 24, which if you're watching on City Cable is Channel 34, and the placement of the public access channel, which ought to be channel 15, but you're watching this on channel 53, aren't you? So, without further ado, we're going to go ahead right now and replay some footage here of this public hearing featuring Larry Rice, PEP, and anybody else who wants to speak their mind. So, roll it. We have a very special program in store for you right here on KNLC Channel 24. You won't want to miss it. We've opened up our airtime, our phone lines, everything to empower the people, to give all of you the opportunity to share concerns that you have about the city of St. Louis, about this area, whether it's cable TV, whether it's a football stadium, uh, whether it's abandoned housing all over the city, or whatever it is, the city budget. Joining me at this time is Bernie Hayes. Bernie, it's great to have you join this Thank you, Larry, program. It's great to be here, too, and it's very important that this issue comes up this evening because uh, this is the in time to get the input uh, for those who otherwise might not have a chance to, to uh, be heard. Well, we time. believe that democracy in action is the best democracy. Recent report, in fact, you did it at your radio station, uh, shared how a lot of people are alienated as far as politics are concerned. They feel that like they're locked out of the system. Hopefully, through this program, we're going to let people see that they do, there's power in the people, whether it's through the initiative petition process, whether it's the people becoming aware of the issues, whether, uh, first of all, getting people to register to vote, all those different issues, but people knowing that their, that their issues, that which is on their heart, is important, and we want to hear from them, don't we? People need to be involved. They should get involved. This is their opportunity to become involved. And give us a call right here and let your concerns be heard. Okay. Right here this evening at Bur Bur uh, Bernie brought up a very important point. We have people here at the phone. So even if you couldn't have made it down to the KNLC Channel 24 studios to testify, you can call in and we'll be sharing your concerns uh, with our panelists who we're going to introduce to you a little bit, uh, as well as the studio audience. And so the number is 436-2424. If you have issues that you'd like to discuss, opinions that you'd like to state, sound off right now. If you want to call this program something, we call it sounding off. It's 436-2424 in the St. Louis area. Toll free anywhere in the state of Missouri, 1-800-334-3276. Illinois, 1-800-242-3276. A lot of important issues right now before our, our city, city government concerning the budget uh, right now, uh, football stadium issue, the homeless problem we have in our community, many of them, and we need to hear from the people, don't we? People, Larry, uh, Larry, people, the politicians are counting on people not being heard, mm -hmm. on them not participating in the process, and this is their opportunity. People who don't think they can be heard, this is a chance to be heard. This is a chance now, right this moment. Give us a call. Okay, the phones are ringing, and as you call in and we share your comments, by the way, they have two audio tapes in place over here, and they're going to do two things. First one, the general issues about the budget, stadium, homeless, like the 436-2424 number, you may want to call that. And and if you'd like to get it on audio tape, they'll actually tape your comments and send that tape to the different aldermen. And then a lot of you shared concerns about what's happening with the cable monopoly in this community, TCI Cable. That's 436-3600. They'll tape your comments, and they'll even send them to uh, the, not only the TCI director of cable in the state of Missouri, they'll send it on to Colorado to the national right. headquarters. Let them know what's going on right. here. There's people upset over it. I'm the alderman from the 8th Ward. And next to you, we have uh, a lady taking, summarizing all these comments and uh, going to be sending them out there. Uh, Judy Redlick is doing that. And we have some others that have indicated that they'll be joining us later in the program. I'm over here at the phones with Pete Parisi. Pete, we're getting all kinds of different calls in here at this time. It's exciting. Uh, Ray's not alone in his views. Others are calling in. You've got some there. We have a call from uh, Mrs. Grinstow. Uh -huh. He wants to know why the state doesn't provide a better way for our homeless men and women to exist. Okay. We got another one just came in from a Mary Skinnell, and she wants to know 
about the derelict Oak housing in the city of St. Louis and what the city fathers are going to do about it. You know, Larry, I think people have been pushed around for so long that they're just starting to give up and we can't let that happen. Right. We've got to understand that it would just that we're, uh, the way for evil to prevail is for good people to do nothing. And good people need to stand up and be heard like these people are. People, you shouldn't be apathetic because it takes a lot of little voices to make one big voice. Well, I know you're doing that as far as your concerns is, uh, concerning the, the, what the cable company in St. Louis is doing. And this may tie into a, big, a bigger way than what any of us know is concerning the political atmosphere as well. You can take the people and their concerns and shove them way down on the dial. Maybe they won't be heard is what they think. It's time for everybody to wake up and start doing something. All right, if you agree with that, Pete's over here at the phones. Give him a call. We've got phone operators are here. People are calling in regularly, and they're handing these to us right now. Uh, there's so many people. John Rustage of Fenton, Missouri, wonders why we need another stadium when we really never had a good team, and we already have Bush Stadium. What would be done with Bush Stadium if we were to have another stadium? And um, this person uh, feels that there's nothing... Uh, there. Uh, there's nothing uh, wrong with the new stadium, but wants to know why we can't take care of our homeless, unemployed people first. Uh, hello, um, I'm here to testify on the uh, cable issue. I realize that it isn't nearly as important as uh, feeding and clothing the poor and housing the homeless, but it's something that I do feel s strongly about, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Reverend Rice for allowing me to speak here tonight. I am here to represent the citizens of this city who have suffered enough. It is time for the common man to come from behind the shadows and stand up against the evils plaguing our beloved city. These evils, defined as greed and corruption, are running rampant within the organization representing the interest of cable television in the city of St. Louis. This corporation is exploiting the citizens of St. Louis through higher cable fees while depriving us of cultural programming vital to the community and, and its well-being. The money-grubbing iconoclasts, reminiscent of the betrayal of Judas, have seen fit to shift a, a non-for-profit religious station devoted totally to faith, helping unfortunates, and... and wholesome family entertainment to an undesirable channel location. These pagans instead prefer to broadcast material portraying nudity, foul language, deviant sexual activity, and other perversions in lieu of programming like Father Knows Best and Bonanza. The same situation has occurred to the public access channel to which I am related. Wholesome family entertainment such as Pro Wrestling with Big Daddy and Worldwide Magazine will not be seen by some people in the community as special equipment is needed to receive the channel signal. The TCI Corporation, headquartered in Denver, will have no idea of the enormous impact their decision will incur on the community. The reason for the channel changes, of course, is money. After all, there are tremendous profits to be made. Any broadcaster getting advertising support from sources such as the alcohol industry seem to wield a mighty sword when it comes to channel location. Both Reverend Rice and Pete Parisi broadcast not to generate revenue, but for the love of spreading their messages to the community. This latest travesty has not gone unnoticed. It is time for the common man in this town to stand up and revolt against these acts perpetrated by these parties. Stand up for your rights. Register to vote. Thank you and God bless you. Your views are important. You know, frequently in the society in which we live, if someone is poor, unemployed, hard-working, middle-class even, uh, you know, it, it, they often are made to feel like they're not important. What we want to do and communicate through this is that people and their views are important and we want to be able to have access. Uh, and we want to be able to let themselves be heard and let the community hear what they have to say because what they have to say is important. And the reason, first of all, I think because of a uh, certain cable system that is trying to shut you up, that it moved your TV accessibility is because that you are too vocal, because that you're you holding hearings such as these. And this is what ha needs to happen. People need to support you. They need to call right now that the voices be heard because it's a worthy cause. It's for you. And we want to give you that opportunity. The number's right there on your screen. We have somebody standing by ready to testify. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
you very much. My name is Emmett McAuliffe, and I'm an attorney, and I'm a resident of the 24th Ward in the city of St. Louis, where we're actually rather proud of our alderman, uh, Robert Ruggieri, for being somewhat of a maverick on this issue and uh, taking on, uh, taking at least a close look at what's going on with the cable problem. The uh, First of all, I also want to uh, say that I am a talk show host for WGNU on Friday afternoons and uh, consider myself to be very interested in uh, a wide range of city issues. And also, I want to excuse uh, my, my dress tonight. I'm going to a baseball game later on after this hearing is over. And uh, by the way, I'll be going to uh, a baseball game at a stadium, which looks perfectly fine to me. Uh, 52,000 people is a lot of people. And uh, the money they want to spend on building a new stadium is an awful lot of money. The subject of my little address to you today is is to try to encourage people to do some studying on the issues of the cable business and TCI and some research on the issue of the stadium. And here's someone that uh, cable, uh, said about the cable, uh, they do anything, so, uh, they won't do anything, so I canceled uh, my cable. They said, now I, they got, I got extra money in my pocket, okay? I, I have also investigated into it. Uh, the alderman from the 24th Ward and uh, Paul Barrow Jr., who I had attended high school with, um, I've had one or two conversations regarding it. Uh, I think that the, the major problem right now is so many people still have old cable-ready TVs that only go up to the first 40 channels, and they are required to pay that four dollars, that five dollars a month. Uh, we want you to hear and see someone again commenting on the streets about what they think about cable. Yes, God bless you. Top of the afternoon, this is Minister Wayne. I'm standing in front of the TCI Cable Company here in. Uh, Central West End of uh, St. Louis, and they have just changed the public assets channel from 15 to 53, station 53, and this will reduce the viewership in North St. Louis and South St. Louis where there were very poor individuals. And as an individual who is responsible for his community, I believe the TCI, TCI Cable Company is nothing but a money-grubbing institution which is concerned with its profit motives. Uh, rather than its constituents who purchase their cable from TCI. TCI has very poor uh, service in the black community, and people in North St. Louis should uh, have an uprising for this. They should uh, complain more to the management of, of TCI and, and call your alderman to change the laws. And TCI has also moved channel, channel 24, the Reverend Larry Rice's station, from 24 to 34 in the city of St. Louis, and from station 24 to 37 in the city of St. Charles. And this will reduce viewer access ship, and channel 4 will be used for godless programs, programming, which influence the minds of our children and send them on the path to destruction. We as a community must stand up against TCI and demand that Channel 15 be reinstituted as a public access station, and that TCI no longer threaten us with moving this station to Channel 53, so that they can increase their profit motive and possibly cancel public access TV altogether in the future. You used to have cable television. Why don't you have it now? Uh, because they ain't fair. What's wrong with them? Uh, it's hard too much. They, uh, not good service. Well, what is the cable company doing wrong? Well, uh, they are uh, overcharged, and uh, the uh, service wasn't too good. Hi, do you have cable at home? No. Why not? Because it's pretty high. Would you get it if it was a little less expensive? Of course. Do you think it's out of the price range of regular people, like poor people and working people? Yes. A lot of people are upset and concerned about TCI cable in the city moving channel 24 to 34 and out in St. Charles for moving it from 24 to something like 37 and they put some kind of mind expansion thing on 24 out there, really confusing the people out there in a way, but we're not going to be quiet. We're going to come through louder and clearer and work harder to even try to get our power up. And a lot of people are calling in here, Bernie. Uh, a they're lot they're of counting people. on people being quiet. That's oh yeah, well the people aren't going to be quiet. we got a loud audience. They're sounding off and we encourage them to do it, okay? I'm a homeowner. I'd like to address uh, two questions. First question I'd like to address to both of you aldermen. Uh, I, I heard that one of you does not have cable in the city. 
Okay, well, do you have cable? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, on this cable issue right now with the channel switch and everything, are the aldermen or anybody, you know, special groups getting together trying to get the public access channel back to its original channel? Because right now there's a message board on channel 15. It's been there ever since they moved channel 15 to channel 53. And I'm sure with Larry Rice's channel too, with 24 to 34, I really don't understand it. Why are they moving it? First of all, has the alderman done anything about it? Or are groups of people done anything about it? Have you heard? Um, I had specifically inquired of uh, Mr. Paul Bear, our cable manager mm -hmm. in the city, uh, because the problem came to my attention because some of the channels that they're kicking up past 40 and 50 mm -hmm. are no longer available on the old-fashioned cable-ready television channels. Uh, the, the, the problem that I think you're addressing is 29 is moving to a different number, or 20. That's okay, once you go past 53, that is a problem right. because the cable-ready TVs today go up to 100 channels or more, whereas the cable-ready TVs from years ago only went up to 40, 50 channels, so now people would have to pay $5 a month for the little black box. Right, that's exactly what I'm getting across. Why should they have to be moved in the first place? Why couldn't they just leave the channel right there? That's the issue I'm, you know, I can't understand as a, you know. Cable. Well, it's not just that one specific channel. It's gonna be a whole host of channels as they expand what's available to you on cable television. Right. And uh, unfortunately, they made an economic decision. Um, I know that I've addressed it and other aldermen have addressed it with them. And as complaints come in, there may be something we can do in those particular cases so, and whether because they, they explained to right. me that only 10 percent of the previous cable ready televisions cannot go above channel 50 okay. um, when i inquired and i don't know if that's true or not but i did inquire i did get those numbers if it's wrong and it's different call in here and tell us that there's more than 10% of you out there that don't go past 50 on cable ready. Well, see, that's the problem. You know, like I say, people who can't afford it are coming to me. See, I'm on the Worldwide Magazine show, and I have a lot of people come to me, and they're really disheartened about this. They don't know what to do because they want to spend the money to watch the channel, but they're afraid to, you know, because they know the bills are going to go up every month. It seems like the cable bills just keep going up and up. And this is the problem. I mean, these poor people want to watch something, and they can't watch it. So why is that channel has to sit there with a message board constantly? It's ridiculous. And, and like I say, how can groups of people like me or anybody get together with the aldermen and talk about it? You know, this is the problem. Talk to your talk to each of your individual aldermen. We'll, we'll see how many calls we get in here okay. this evening, and we'll go back. I went, like I said, I went to high school with Paul Bear. He, he is a, um, alert to this problem. Um, he, he'd given me his explanation of the problem when I came to him last Friday. I just caught him in the hallway and asked him about the problem. Well, Judy Redlick is here, and Judy's been handling a cable complaint hotline. And Judy, within a week's time, how many calls would you estimate that you've gotten? This is a concern of people. Well, we get about 10 to 12 calls a day. Okay, so you're getting about 70, 80 calls a week. Right. In the, in the past two weeks, we've gotten about 175 complaints. So people are definitely concerned about it. They this. definitely are. Okay. And that number is 436-3600. Uh, okay, 436-3600. Yes, Steve? Is the concern that the channel is, is just moving, or is it the concern that the channel is moving past channel 50? What's well, some of the concerns well, that you're getting? Those are some of the concerns, but a lot of people say that the uh, cable system, uh, they get blackout sometimes and they have to use their channel changer to go through the channel system to get, and then they find other channels and then they finally get back to the other one and there's not a blackout anymore and that's a problem. They uh, find, a lot of people uh, say that there's repeats on cable. A lot of people are uh, not, don't like the new Encore that they're going to be charged for or, or that possibility. Um, there's just a whole host of complaints, not only from St. Louis City, but uh, Jefferson County, St. Charles County. And uh, some people are complaining about not getting their cable repaired when it's broken at a, at a reasonable time limit. So uh, I guess what we're touching on uh, through this and what Judy's discovered through the cable complaint hotline is that there isn't a place that people can really voice a consumer group, that people can really voice these concerns and, and let, you know, just really see some action taken on it. Uh, uh, and again, it's our aldermen in our city that's given this co uh, company the right to operate for, uh, what, f 15 years uh, uh, right now? They, they have that franchise agreement. You know, myself, I personally don't have cable because I don't think it's worth the money, um, and I won't pay it. 
actually on some of the channels, people can't get past 13 or 13. That's the problem with these older sets that people do have. See, people just can't go out and buy a new TV set just because somebody wants to go past a higher number, you know, and that's what the problem is. See, a lot of these people that do watch public access do not have the money, you know, to watch television to go past these channels. They only go, and I'm talking about nice big TV sets, too. I'm talking about some people have 40-inch sets that I know that can't get past channel 36. Let's see, like Reverend Rice's channel, yeah. um, and I'm kind of a cheap son of a gun myself, yeah. But if I was in that situation, I had cable when I had apartment, an apartment a couple of years ago. I mean, I would just pull the, the plug off the back and put my antenna on and get it on channel, you know, the UHF or VHF or whatever that is. I think what, so. uh, what he's touching on is that when we okay a cable entity to be a franchise in a community, we want to know what they're going to do to serve that community. Right. That whole philosophy is changing today. Public access, they knock themselves out trying to say, we're going to provide public access. Uh, now, public access also shows the Board of Alderman meetings. Maybe they don't want to see that. You know, <laughs> just shove it way down there, okay? Uh, it also, uh, it, it could be a real vital part of the community. And I guess what we're seeing here at Channel 24 is uh, a role kind of thrust on us. Uh, one that uh, we try to do, but if you're, if you're trying to deal with Jefferson County, St. Charles County, East St. Louis, uh, Alton, uh, uh, Franklin County, all over, it's very difficult for you to be a public access channel as well. If, if this many people feel this greatly about it, that everyone get together at one time and cancel your subscriptions. And that way, uh, maybe you'll get their attention. I mean, if you go a month without... <laughs> if you go a month without cable, it may be well worth it. Okay, okay well, if you feel like you have to have it, do what Pete Parisi said and go pay him in pennies the next time, okay? Uh, <laughs> gather together all the pennies you can and four or five hundred people doing that. Yeah, but see, that's easy to say because a lot of people don't care. You know, there's people that will care and do it. And like you say, well, just cancel out. Well, some another bunch of people say, well, I want cable now. And then they'll give you a better rate and they'll lie to you. You know, they'll say, no, oh, a bunch of new people will come on board now. We'll, we'll make a deal with them now. We'll, we'll start, you know, giving them sales and stuff like that. Sure, it's easy to do that. You know, but you're going to get a, a bunch of other people who are just going to come out of nowhere and just, you know, pay the bill. You know? oh, okay, but, go ahead. In, in my private business, which I, where I'm an accountant, I've done a lot of work for other cable companies throughout the country back when it first became an industry. One thing cable companies want, and which makes them marketable and why they're so expensive, is they want subscribers more than anything else, and they want market penetration. If you could just get 5% of their subscribers, it'd be kind of like the rent strikes in New York and back in the 60s. All you have to do is make a dent at it, and you'll get their attention. You'll also get the attention of the Board of Aldermen or the County Council or Jefferson County because all of a sudden the cable people said, well, maybe we might want to do something. If we're losing 10% of our subscribers, which is not that many, it's only 10%, that's a heck of a lot of marginal revenue that they wouldn't otherwise be getting because their overhead's the same every month. Okay, we're going to pick this up right after. Uh, we want to hear from Steve Parisi right after uh, this, and then we'll be back, uh, and we want Steve to, he's got some things he wants to share. Hear this, you who trample the needy and do away with the poor of the land. Let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. You trample on the poor and force him to give you grain. Therefore, though you have built stone mansions, you will not live in them. Though you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. You oppress the righteous and take bribes, and you deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Seek good, not evil, that you may live. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you, just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good. Okay, Pete uh, is here. He's got some things he wants to share. We felt like it was important to inject that. So many times poor folks, uh, needy folks, and others of us feel like we just don't have a voice. And uh, we, need to, and we feel alone and feel the powers that be would oppress. We realize you're not alone. God loves you. He cares about you. And he's bigger than the rest of them. <laughs> Pete. I just want to inject something. I've been working with Reverend Rice and Judy Redlick uh, since this thing began with the cable company. And after doing many things, having a good number of articles in the newspaper, 
having uh, the aldermen write negative memos about the cable company, after having protests in front of the cable company, I'm very sad to announce that the cable company cares nothing about any of this stuff. The only way that we'll be able to reach them is by canceling the cable because they really couldn't care less about public opinion. They have an unregulated monopoly and there's nothing we can do to them except to vote with our feet. And I would suggest if you're going to save money on your cable bill, maybe you could spend that money every month on Channel 24 because at least the money will go not just to make profit but to help people. Okay, thanks a lot, Pete, and uh, that's a very important uh, issue. Um, I'm in St. Louis City, and we have TCI cable, mm -hmm. and what recently happened here is that <clears throat> we've had a very popular public access station uh, ever since cable came in about five years ago, and recently uh, TCI has done a complete switch, well, not complete switch, switch of channels, but they have moved some of the channels like public access and a religious activist channel uh, higher on the dial which cuts out about fifty percent of the people who are able to receive the channel because of their TV sets or whatever they would have to buy converter boxes and they're not uh, either able or they don't uh, want to do that so what the problem is here is that we have public access that is actually being removed from the public they, the station that it was on has been now replaced by a message board by the cable company telling you how to pay your cable bill faster and uh, it seems that the decisions in this instance are made in Denver, Colorado where TCI's headquarters are as opposed to St. Louis where we are. We're the people that watch the shows. We're the people that vote some of these shows as the most popular in the St. Louis area and yet now they're taking that and moving it to a channel that is inaccessible has become public in access uh, up the line. So was that's, your cable, our, that's was, our problem. Was your cable channel originally uh, owned by uh, Star Broadcast? It was originally owned, uh, it was used to be called uh, STL Cable Vision, and TCI bought uh, Cable Vision out about two years ago. City of St. Louis had two different cable systems, one for North St. Louis and one for South St. Louis. Hi, you're watching Worldwide Magazine. This is Marty's intelligent brother, Mark. And once again, you're watching a special excerpt of a public hearing which was broadcast this past June 25th dealing with issues in society in the city of St. Louis regarding its cable TV channel placement, uh, various city issues, uh, other things. We have people speaking their minds in front of the microphone. And my brother Marty is incoherent about most other things. Why would he want to talk about squirrels anyway? Through Channel 24 here. Why can't cable be regulated by the aldermen? Well, I think uh, you all want to answer that. Go ahead, uh, Mary. I'm glad to answer that question. Uh, it cannot be regulated. In 1984, cable was deregulated by the federal government, and subsequently, uh, the aldermen lost control of any. We lost any control that we had. Uh, they saw fit to allow the cable companies, in essence, if you will, to to call the shots. Uh, one of the controversies right now, as you know, is they're giving us a station for a, for a year, just about. Uh, they're giving it to us, and we're not asking for it. And they're saying it's only going to cost us a dollar. But the point here being is, is that people would like to order what they want, even if they must pay for it. But because we have no control, the cable company has that regulation. However, some of us did talk to the cable manager in City Hall, and we talked to him extensively and told him to get in touch with TCI and let TCI know how we felt about it. I went to a convention in Atlanta in 1984, and that's when cable was deregulated and we thought we had a handle on it but we do not the federal government permitted that to happen and so I think ultimately what cable could possibly do is price themselves out of business okay you can change the city charter with what eight percent of the registered voters that uh, 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 voted in the right. can you change this if these people went out with the initiative petition got eight percent of the voters in the city of St. Louis saying we don't want TCI cable as part of their city charter could that uh, 
bring that up if enough people were uh... I don't think that would work Larry in as much as again uh, the federal government permitted it not not the state uh, n not the city but the federal government the however we are the ones who did vote on cable and we are late bloomers so to speak you know we hassle over cable TV for years and when I was in Atlanta people were renewing their 20 years and 15 years it had cable that long while city of St. Louis did not so I don't think that would work I think what would have to happen we have to talk uh, to the, wa the Washington folks and, and you know how you, what kind of response you would get from those people what was your reason for setting up a complaint hotline well because we felt that uh, the people when they called the people on the public utilities and, and the aldermen there and uh, Mr. Barrow's office they just weren't getting a hearing uh, and when they asked them to come out like to this or to be on a radio program and come out publicly and testify or hear what the people had to say they wouldn't show up they'd say one thing and then they'd do something else so there's this this concern that the consumer just isn't being heard and there's this tremendous undercurrent and rightly so perhaps in the city of St. Louis because TCI was never selected by their alderman there was two other companies that were and they just bought out the two other companies well, uh. Larry when we were debating debating cable uh, there were two there were three as a matter of fact and then one dropped out and it was most interesting to me that at the time TCI did not bid um, uh, and my question to them at the time or to the persons who were lobbying for the other stations, uh, why did TCI agree to fund another station, uh, cable uh, station, uh, to the tune of $63 million if they were not ultimately going to own it? And I was assured that uh, TCI was not interested in St. Louis, although they're the number one cable company in the city. Uh, well, I was assured, but I never did believe that because if I had believed that I never would have asked the question. Uh, I don't know why TCI saw fit to come into the back door, but that's exactly how they got it, and now they're in control of the city. And so, Steve? And one other point, and we go back to whether or not you want to cancel, and if 200 people show up with the little black boxes and cancel, but I, I just remembered the number in the number that they use when they look and value at cable companies, mm -hmm. and they decide, well, how much is this cable company worth? Well, you know what a cable company is worth? It's worth between $1,500 and $2,000 uh -huh. a subscriber. So every person that turns in their black box is costing these people $2,000, not today, but over the time frame and the potential sale, uh, sale of them as subscribers, because that's what the value of a cable company is, is the number of subscribers and their market penetration. Because you're going you're gonna to subscribe for 10 years, or forever, and you're going to send your $25 or $30 in every month, forever. That's worth a lot of money. Well, let's bring this man in that's over to yeah. Mike. I know he wants to react to some of this. We've got something to say. Hi, uh, I'm, Mart I'm Marty from uh, the uh, resident in 15th Ward in South St. Louis. And um, my issue about uh, TCI Cable is uh, saddens me that um, the uh, TCI Cable Company doesn't um, listen to the public and uh, really don't care. But... Um, just think of it, if everybody would uh, didn't have cable today, all it would be would just be a bunch of sinful wires on a telephone post in backyards, in alleyways. All it would be is just a bunch of lines that didn't mean nothing. Probably for uh, birds to roost on and squirrels to run around and crows or what have you, the wildlife area. It would just be a, um, a thing for the... Um, birds, natural stuff that's uh, out in the open. But uh, what I feel is that um, the stadium project, I think that's all a bunch of riffraff. And I feel that um, if you want to talk about a stadium project, we got one right down here at, uh, it's called Bush Stadium. And uh, you want a dome stadium, why don't you just put a dome on this uh, Bush Stadium. We'll have, we'll have something accomplished. It's already there. It's been b made back in 1966 or whatever it was. But um, I feel that um, is um, a real issue about everything uh, here tonight. And I think it should be uh, well spoken. The people out there you're watching should uh, express uh, your uh, concern. Hi, this is Marty's intelligent brother, Mark, and you're watching a very special edition of Worldwide Magazine tonight. We're re-cable casting excerpts of a public hearing at KNLC Channel 24 concerning 
city issues, uh, cable television, and a whole bunch of other things. So sit back and watch some more. You're watching a public hearing here on Channel 24, and we've been on the air now for a considerable time and many good questions being raised. I'm Jim Barnes, and I usually host the program The Poor Have Suffered Enough, which is, I think, a, a sub-theme of that is the theme enough. I think many of us know that we deal with some very hard issues here in the St. Louis metro area, and we've been discussing them on the program. Pete, you've been involved as a person in public access now for many years, uh, trying to bring uh, another alternative viewpoint. Maybe you could share just a few moments as to some of the things you see as you look out at St. Louis. What are the concerns you have, not only cable TV, but uh, what do you see as some of the real important issues that we should be looking at? I think the people in St. Louis have been neglected and pushed around by many people that run the city government for a long time to the point where they've just given up. They don't have the will to fight anymore and the fact is that if enough people did get together and would voice their concerns we can do something about what's happening in the city. I think as Pete shared that I know as we've talked on the phones and I, I like to address this to the older persons on our panel Pete has just raised the point that people kind of give up once in a while and uh, I imagine as older people you understand what that means. I heard Steve say a little while ago that if people really wanted to see action you can get it. It means you cancel something or you take drastic steps. Maybe you could comment on Pete's uh, reflection as to people giving up. Uh, what, what do you see as the hope or the possibility for action in the community? Uh, Steve? Well, a couple things. and I, I'm a a little bit of a political animal, and uh, I've watched politics. Uh, my dad was the mayor before uh, Mayor Shamel. Uh, I grew up with it all of my life. And as Alderman Bailey said, in her case, she won her election by eight votes. Jack Beekner lost to Joan Kelly Horn by 52 votes. Now, you know what that 52 votes mean? That one extra person in every square mile voting made a difference in that election. Uh, there's a why this is from Lowell Hunter, uh, Lionel Hunter, I'm sorry. Why doesn't the cable company have competition? It says service is lousy, but what can you do? I like some of the programming, but I don't want to cancel it. What can I do? Uh, cable. Why doesn't it have uh, competition? I'm going to, It doesn't have it simply because TCI is the only cable company in the city. It's like Bell Telephone. Uh, they don't have any competition either, and it's like or Le Gas. Uh, you can't say I'm going to take my business elsewhere. I wish I could, especially with Le with Clee Gas. Gas is regulated by the Public Utilities Commission, and cable isn't. Well, the federal government deregulated, and we had no control over that, as you well know, and I think I mentioned that earlier on. Go now to the special piece. We'll be right back as we continue in this hearing. I first heard that the Reverend Larry Rice was going to have a television station 10, 12 years ago. I couldn't believe it. How can a homeless shelter run a television station? Well, they did it, and nobody thought they were going to be able to do it, and it's been an important voice in St. Louis, a voice for people that uh, don't have access to TV. Channel 24 is a kind of public access, uh, except Channel 24 goes out over the airwaves, and we at Worldwide Magazine, uh, we're dependent upon cable. But Reverend Larry Rice and, and his people down at Channel 24, a lot of their good work is not going to get seen because more and more cable is taking over everybody's market. And they're obviously trying to, uh, trying to give um, Reverend Rice and Channel 24 the shaft. You know, at first they had him on Channel 27, and they had to raise a big legal ruckus to get him put down to his right number, Channel 24. And so... And now they're just, they're just trying to move him on up the dial and out. We continue in our special hearing here on Channel 24, and we've been listening to comments from the citizenry, but as well uh, having participation by aldermen from the city of St. Louis and older women. We're really pleased that they take the time to share. Bernie, you have some other comments as Sorry. you uh, have been talking to people on the phone and getting a response. And St. Charles wants to warn the poor to stay away from expensive entertainment in St. Louis and use their money to support themselves and their families. These are some of the concerns that are coming in. This one says, why doesn't the cable company show good faith by making the public access channel available to every cable subscriber, regardless of the setup? 
Dan Jenkins says the city gets over one million dollars a year from cable franchise fees. Ask the aldermen, all the persons, why can't we use this money for the homeless? Another comment from Tom Franny. The city of St. Louis is now beginning to cut services because the city is not contributing to the hospital funds which were promised. The city's, uh, so the city's priorities are all mixed up, he says. This comment says, ask Larry Rice if they could start a boycott. And I assume they're talking to, uh, uh, about the, the cable company, TCI. And from Victoria King, with all the problems in the city, how can the mayor fight against Reverend Larry Rice? I'm praying for our city leaders. Could uh, either of you respond to these comments? Uh, uh, just quick on that cable franchise fees, yes. We do take in about a million dollars. The unfortunate thing is the members of the Ways and Means Committee cannot necessarily touch that money because that is not taken into general revenue. That is into a separate fund. That is how we pay for uh, programming and the, the public access the city provides. Now, the city does, believe it or not, they get, they get very tricky, and uh, a couple movements of the hand, they're able to get about $100,000 of that money. Uh, we charge the uh, cable department, the cable division, for their payroll, for legal fees, and various other things. So we're able to get $100,000 of it. Um, unfortunate, unfortunately, we can't do that much more with their million dollars. It is sitting there. The city... Uh, has needed the money, they've rated it, but we cannot direct the expenditure of that million dollar franchise. Please. Mary? When we were delivering, uh, deliberating cable, uh, the aldermen in their wisdom, and I'm delighted that we did so, uh, my microphone never works, does it? It doesn't work. <laughs> it's uh, the aldermen in their wisdom saw fit to set up what is called a philanthropic organization because there was so much bickering over over the over the funds and what we do uh, now is that usually around January the philanthropic send out an RFP and we we fund uh, not non for profit corporations um, many are funded uh, the principal amount of the monies uh, we fought in court for a long time over this because the city was trying to get the money back uh, unfortunately I'm delighted that we didn't because we wouldn't know what that money is at this point in time either however uh, many non-for-profit corporations who could not make it otherwise now get funds from the from the philanthropic organization as a result of the cable uh, monies uh, someone was that person from St. Charles that said tell the home tell the poor people to do what the one I think I'm in St. Charles. Yes, it says uh, well, that they should uh, help themselves more or less. You know, it's, 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 it's interesting to me that uh, someone from St. Charles uh, could tell poor people what to do in as much I'm, I probably don't realize what poor is. Uh, who's to say what poor people do with their monies? Uh, we don't know. I think, uh, I think in, in, in most wards, we would say that people who are, even middle income people, uh, where I think the budget of the federal government is, uh, budget is balanced on the middle incomes back, uh, are suffering as well as those persons who are below the medium income, so to speak. And, uh, while we would like to, I'd like to be the mother and father of the world, I can't be that, and neither can that person who's in St. Charles. I think in human relations, don't we see so much of this uh, as we share uh, the equation on any level, lower, middle, upper classes, very often people put other things first. Remember we are talking about earlier, I think you shared about that, Steve, about cable. If you're really serious, you'll give it up. I wonder if people can or is it a habit? You see what I'm saying? On any level, poor, middle, or upper class, uh, we get hung up on things. M maybe you could respond to the, the equation, well, let, the human let equation. Let me say this to you. Uh, I, I do not intend to tell uh, low-income people what to do with their monies. Uh, right. That is not my job. On the other hand, perhaps, they certainly, if they have three or four children, they can't go to the movie and pay $6 per head. So maybe cable is the only entertainment they have. Maybe that's what they have. And, and it's their right to have it, just as it's the right of anyone else. And I think that's... That's enough said. That's good. And, and most importantly is, I mean, this is America, and, and the whole idea is you have the freedom to choose on how you want to live and how you spend your limited resources. We have another gentleman now who would like to share some comments. Uh, and, sir, would you share them at this time? 
Yes, my name is Minister Don Wayne, and I have uh, several um, concerns. Number one is TCI Cable Company. I understand you all them have no control over them, but they have gone from 8.95 when they originally started to 22.95, which is a disgrace because the poor, the poor people cannot afford that, and they should some type of agreement should be made with them. And in addition, they moved Channel 15 to Channel 53, and they moved Channel 24 to Channel 34, which requires a little black box, which is an additional $5, which is is in much in excess of what the public can afford. And they should come down off their high horses and reduce their profit margin, because that's what it is. It's about profits. It's not not, not about the concern of the poor or no other constituents or consumers, or the, which they're responsible for in the city of St. Louis. Mr. Wayne, I, I understand your concerns about the cable, and you said it, it is uh, poor people cannot afford it, and you're probably correct. They probably can't. But I guess what we have to remember is cable, is cable, TCI is a business, and it's a business to make a profit. And what I said earlier is I think if they continue to increase their rates, they could price themselves right out of business. And I suspect that is what's going to happen because people are now be, be, becoming very upset about what is occurring. Uh, we have a solution. As a subscriber to TCI Cable, I was really angered by the changing of all my favorite channels. They had the nerves to put channel 30 on channel 8. That's a local channel. Why couldn't they just keep channel 30 on channel 30? And our public access TV, we need that. We need our public access TV. We need channel 24. It's a community station. It gives the people a chance to speak out and um, have their own show, a chance to voice their opinions, see a lot of local programming. We need Channel 24. I don't like the way that TCI is trying to charge people for Encore, Channel 14, by saying that if in July you don't call them, they're going to charge you for it. Well, why charge you for it? This is supposed to be a 30-day trial thing, you know. It seems to me that they're trying to get people to pay a little extra money by saying, you know, if you don't call them in July, a lot of people don't read their mail. And so they have to end up paying for Encore anyway, and they're constantly raising their prices. I think TCI needs to get it together and get it on the ball. We remind you that you're watching a special show tonight. We're playing back cuts from a public hearing this past June 25th at KNLC, the Reverend Larry Rice's own TV station, regarding city issues about the placement of his public access channel 24. Uh, Pete's show, Worldwide Magazine, which you're watching now, is on channel 53. It ought to be on channel 15. So we're speaking our minds along uh, not just this issue, but city issues and uh, other points in general. And we've got lots more footage to see, so let us continue. Okay, Pete uh, has been very heavily involved in the problem of uh, not only 24 being located, you've been working with us, but also the, the public access channel. And you talked with one of the representatives recently on the phone. Maybe you could just uh, give us an introduction. We're going to listen to that in the next moment or so. Well, I spoke to uh, Mr. Greg Shocker, who's the general manager of TCI Cable in the city of St. Louis. And I must say, I don't agree with what he said, but he's a very eloquent, well-spoken man. And here's what he has to say. Okay, we're going to listen now to Mr. Shocker as he shares his comments, took the time on the phone, uh, even though he said he could not make it this evening. We're going to listen now as he shares about the position of TCI Cable. My response and was in the initial response to your, to your request and to the city's request of why are you moving the channels. And I explained to the city at that time that there are technical reasons why certain channels must move. There are technical reasons why other channels uh, must stay where they are. And uh, in doing these changes, we had to move close to half of our channel lineup. And we are also adding three additional channels to provide more services for the customers. And um, when we looked at the channel lineup and evaluated what channel was where, we had to move KNLC channel 24 because it was in a bandwidth that we had to use technically for the mid-band. It's the only way we could secure those channels is in, the, in, in that band, bandwidth. 
Are you talking about the tier of programming that will cost like a dollar something extra a month? Right. Right. That's in effect now. Right. The only way we can secure that is having it in that specific bandwidth that we can trap out physically. That's our security. Same as a pay channel. You have to trap that out so that a person that does not want it doesn't receive it. How about uh, the move of channel 15 to channel 53? Well, I'll finish on KNLC first. Okay. Uh, KNLC was, in evaluating the lineup, looking at the lineup, we decided to put it next to the other religious programming, which was, I think, on 33. That's, that's the EWTN. And Vision. So those two go together hand in hand. Uh, on public access, we were, we were already running public access on channel 53. And so it made sense to move public access to a, an already published public access channel so people knew where public access was. So it made sense to move it there. Well, the channel 15 is not being utilized too much at the moment. Sure it is. Well, every time I turn on, I've never seen a show on there. Well, the show started at 11 o'clock. In the morning? Mm-hmm. Well, when do they end? Uh, seven, I think, or eight o'clock. Well, do you, would you would, would you agree that Channel 15, the way it was with public access, was far more active than the current? Uh... No, not at all. Because I feel that the community bulletin board that's in there is extremely important. Pete, you've been you get, you heard the gentleman's response. We didn't get a chance to have you interact with him. But what would your comment be based on hearing the statement of TCI? Well, this is, uh, I'm not making any comment about Mr. Shaka specifically, but you people that deal with religious issues quite a bit know that the voice of evil sometimes can sound very, very sweet. And uh, I'm not saying Mr. Shaka is evil or anything like that, but he certainly sounds very convincing on the phone, but if you would really evaluate what he was saying, I, I have to beg to disagree with him. And uh, the thing, uh, later on in that conversation, I said, well, don't you think that people tuning on to cable and putting on Channel 24 uh, will think they're watching Reverend Rice's station when they are actually seeing something else? And he said, oh, no, the channel we have on there now has a good picture. Uh, I mean, basically what they're doing is uh, pulling a fast one. And what they told the aldermen when the aldermen first complained to TCI Cable about a month ago was that sure people are going to be mad sure Reverend Rice's people are going to be upset the, the public access people are going to be upset but listen in a few weeks they'll just forget about it and who knows maybe he's right thank you very much Pete we've had a, a lot of things happening and I want to call Bernie in uh, as we come to the last few minutes of our program, I don't believe we'll have time for additional comments, but I will ask for a comment or two from our older persons here. Uh, Bernie, maybe just a comment as we move to the last five minutes of our program, and then we're going to have a kind of a closing comment from each of our guests. Well, I'm just glad people responded like they did. I still have a handful of comments sure here, <laughs> uh, but we can't get them all on the air. This is your way of being accessed. This is your way of being heard. This is your involvement in the political community, and it's still not too late to call at 436-2424. And the wonderful all the person that, that attended this evening, us uh, hearing, uh, I certainly want to say thank you. Bernie, we thank you for being with us and uh, taking the time to kind of help us move things along and, and also see what the pulse is. I remember you mentioned as we were talking in the beginning of the program with Larry Rice about the article we were looking at about the, the involvement in the political process and you commented on that. Maybe you could just uh, make a final comment as we come to the close about involvement. Just a brief overview uh, of what the co comment said. It, the article stated uh, from the Kettering Foundation that people aren't involved, that people are fed up with politics, but uh, we certainly seen proof that that's not true tonight. People are involved. They're involved in their communities. They don't particularly trust politicians, but that's because they don't have politicians like those that are sitting here this evening. So give us a call, 436-2424. Become involved. Your vote counts. Your voice counts. You are a person, and you count. We want to thank you for 
viewing this special hearing. We know that there will be ones like this, I believe, coming up in the future. We feel this has been a good, uh, I don't call it a test, I call it a maybe a first time for us to, do, to go live and have our community interact. Maybe it's the beginning of more people. I think I heard you encouraging people to get involved. That may mean more will be out the next time, more people viewing. I think the word should go out that Channel 24 is d definitely concerned that you become a participant in this whole process. We know people suffer out there. We, I believe there's not a person in this room, any part of this room, that isn't concerned. Won't you just be that much more concerned by doing something out of love and care? Good Thank night. you. Well, we've come to the end of another Worldwide magazine, and this edition dealt primarily or solely with various city issues, uh, football stadium, uh, cable TV, and a whole bunch of other things. The, con the content of this program that you've just watched should concern you and even prompt you to speak your mind yourself. If you didn't get a chance to get on, here's several other ways you can do this. You can write us a letter, address it to Worldwide Broadcasting, Post Office Box, 39333 is the address up there yet? Oh, there it is. St. Louis, Missouri, and the zip code is 63139. And there's another way you can do this. You can speak your mind telephonically on the Worldwide Magazine Viewers Hotline. And the phone number there is 879-3002. 879-3002. And if you have a complaint about your cable service, we're still pushing to get back on Channel 15, but every voice that we can conjure up can yield to one big voice that'll speak out in TCI's mind and undoubtedly irritate their people. So we want you to call 436-3600 if you have a cable complaint or any other kind of complaint regarding your cable service. 436-3600, that's the cable complaint hotline. So this is Marty's intelligent brother Mark, in behalf of Pete, who says, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Thanks, Mark. I would just like to point out that the tape that we played tonight was an edited version of a two and a half hour hearing. It dealt with many issues, but we just showed you the parts that dealt with cable television. I'd like to thank, of course, the Reverend Larry Rice, Judy Rednick from Channel 24, and Jim Barnes, as well as Bernie Hayes for all their help. And thanks to all the wonderful people out there in TV land and everywhere in the whole wonderful world. Don't forget our viewers hotline number is 879-3002 and keep watching and finding out what's going on. Oh, 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 oh. I want to thank Eric Mink. Oh, he wrote this beautiful article about the cable uh, situation and a wonderful review of our show. And thank you. I can't tell you how much that means to me. Thank you very much. Good night.